Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today I want to share with you everything I know about how to keep fasteners fastened, or how to tighten nuts and, and so forth. I've got eight different things or tools here you can see which I'm going to go over. Um, the reason I have become a quasi-expert on this is I've spent on working on a project for a few months where we've had to deal with um, nuts or uh, fasteners which are coming loose from vibration so I have tried to get smart on it and this is just a little bit of uh, what I've learned some of this is common knowledge some of it's a little bit more uh, in depth but first off wanted to start with the obvious which is when you're uh, tightening any trying to tighten any type of a fastener the thicker the bolt diameter is the more torque you're going to get which means the more uh, foot-pounds of, of tightness or torque you're going to have. So I want to just show you a table. So this is just a US bolt torque chart. And as you can see, uh, we used to do a quarter by 20 thread um, on a grade 8 bolt, which is the purple here. You're going to get about 12 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, I'll talk about grade 8 bolts in a second. A normal Home Depot grade 2 or grade 5, only 3 or three year, um excuse me, four or eight pounds dry. If you step up to a three-eighths bolt, you're going to quadruple a lot of these numbers. You go from four to 16 foot-pounds. You go from um, 12 to, let's see here, 45, so just not quite under that. And you can get a few more um, foot-pounds of energy if you go from uh, three-eighths by 16, which is a normally coarse thread, to three-eighths by 24, which is a called a normally fine or NF thread. Um, and then if you say go from 3 8 to 1 half, you yet again double it. So on a grade 8 bolt, 3 8 by 16, you're at 45 foot pounds. And if you double, if you go to half by 13, you're at 110. So that's huge. We, we're going to talk about a lot of different ways to fasten bolts, and sometimes you don't have the liberty in the part design to increase your bolt diameter, but you can spend a lot of time and throw a lot of money at trying to fasten a quarter inch bolt when it might just be cheaper to try to increase the bolt or the fastener size to get a sort of exponentially greater uh, torque. The other thing you want to want to be aware of is that when you're um, doing these, trying to torque a bolt down in an application where this side of thing matters, you're going to want to use a torque wrench. These aren't the cheapest things. I think you can sometimes find them for $50 or $60. I think this one in particular was about $110. And it's got a foot-pounds um, marker there. And you just rotate your oops, you rotate your handle here. The other side is Newton meters, which we're not going to worry about today. But basically what it lets you do is fine-tune your setting and then you put a socket set in here. It needs to be a socket. You can't extend it out further with another type of tool or your leverage will change. And basically when you tighten the bolt down and you hit the um, correct foot pounds that you've dialed in, your this neck will, will snap a little bit or break so you know you've hit that point. A lot of people use these if they change their own car tires. Um, so this would let you sit do the correct torque setting if you had a 3 8 by uh, 16 number grade 8 bolt and you wanted to get 45 foot-pounds you would want to use this to get the correct torque instead of just a crescent wrench or a wrench to to guess it with your own arm strength all right so the first tool was the torque wrench I just showed you the second one is your standard what's called a lock washer which I'm sure everyone here has seen I like I said this is my opinion um, we don't use these I don't find these to be of much value and interestingly in my research a company called Nordlock, which I'm going to mention in a minute, had a link somewhere or, or literature which mentions a NASA study which says that basically lock washers like this don't do much at all. They may do better if they're in wood where they're biting in or something, but um, I think for all intents and purposes, these are are not too uh, too sophisticated. The next one is what's called a nylock nut. This is, a, this is a standard nut, threads in, and then when you get to the bottom of the thread, you'll see there's a nylon 
insert and what happens is that nylon is not really threaded but you can sort of self thread it using the wrench and when you tighten that on there the nylon forms around the nut and it uh, around the bolt threads and it becomes quite tight these are in my opinion a weaker form versus some of the future uh, um, numbers I'm going to talk about here but for some folks they work um, they are not too expensive but they're a lot more money than a regular nut and um, I don't really think that they are reusable because once you form the threads in there it doesn't have the same biting impact um, however the way they work is similar to the way a lot of the other um, devices we're going to talk about works which is the the nylon um, contact with the bolt threads helps reduce the play or the um, any of the uh, back and forth in the nut which before it's in the nylon you can see it's hard to tell but you have a little bit of play in this nut it's actually similar to what any machinist would know as backlash and that backlash allows the nut to wiggle when it, the overall part is vibrated so by having the nylon in there it helps minimize those vibrations in the play which keeps the nut firm which is what helps it from keep backing out Here's a beefy nut. So this is a regular Home Depot, uh, I believe this is 3 8 by 16 um, grade, I don't even know whether it's a grade 2 or a grade 5, but um, either way, according to my chart, it has between 20 and 30 foot-pounds of torque. This is a 3 quarter by 16 grade 8 bolt I bought from McMaster Car. The reason you can tell it's a grade 8 bolt is any grade 8 bolt will have six, one, two, three, four, five, six lines um, on, the t on the head of it. Don't ask me why a grade 8 bolt has six of these, but that's just it. This is also a grade 8 bolt, and you can see, sure enough, it's got the six little marks on top of it. Um, as far as I can tell, or within reason, a uh, grade 8 bolt is the strongest bolt you're going to find. Um, like I said, I'm not an expert. Maybe there's some crazy bolts out there, but um, a grade 8 bolt you can get from any industrial supply house uh, readily in, in any thread. Um, so that's that. So this is a 3 eight, three quarter by 16 threads per inch grade 8 bolt, and if you tighten it down, it has 420 foot-pounds of torque. So that compared to this guy, which is, has... 45. So this is almost 10 times stronger. This is a strong bolt. The other thing I want to show you here is the nut on this is called it's called many things. I call it a castle nut um, or castellated nut. I think I'll show you a, the web page here in a second. But what this allows you to do is you can thread the nut on, and then you would have to drill your bolt, which is not always a small feat. I fully readily recognize, but with the bolt itself drilled, you can then thread a pin through the bolt. Here's a uh, type of cotter pin, which may not work best for this. I'll show you another one on the screen in a second. But obviously, threading a bolt through there would then prevent the nut from backing off. It may loosen you know, a few degrees, but it's not going to um, actually loosen. And you could use a, some type of a um, spring washer in between there to maintain the tension, even if it did loosen just a hair. Um, let me show you some other. All right, so here they are on a McMaster car. I searched for castle nuts. It returns something called a slotted hex nut. Um, and as you can see, they are not the cheapest type of bolts. Um, the one I actually bought was not from here. It doesn't look like McMaster car has grade five versions of these, but um, you know these are these are not the cheapest bolts. But um, what you can see is you can put a cotter pin through it and it will prevent the nut from turning as I just discussed. Here's another picture of that type of a cotter pin. The downside the downside is you've got to get a hole through your bolt and like I said that's not always easy to do but um, it's you're not always going to know the precise location of where you want that to be uh, which makes this a bit of a could be a frustrating affair. Uh, furthermore you don't have perfect precision about where you're going to get the maximum torque because that may that might happen to be where the bolt is tightened, say in between two of the um, two of the slots. So you have to make a somewhat of a compromise. 
in that regard. However, it's a pretty fail-safe design, uh, which I'm a which I am a fan of. Okay, so we've covered the first thing was the torque wrench, regular lock washer, we've got a, a hex nylon type nut. We covered the castle or slotted hex nut next. We've got something which I also am a fan of, which I call a jam nut. I'll show you these. I'm a master here in a second. But the way this works is, and this is a 3 8 by 24, which is a fine thread grade 8 bolt, is it threads on by hand to a certain point, which is the tip. And then what it is, at the uh, there are three points on the nut at the very end where the nut is actually deformed. So what happens is that these require a, quite a bit of effort to um, put to thread on after you hit the end because what it's actually doing is it's deforming the the bolt and the nut around the thread. It's sort of pinching it on. It's sort of trying to force a uh, square block through a round hole. But um, they provide a lot of torque. And similar to what I mentioned about how the um, nylon, uh, nylon nuts work is they're trying to push material in between the threads to prevent any sort of wiggle or loosening or, or looseness which would allow vibrations to work the nut loose. So in this instance, instead of using nylon to fill that void, you're using um, the metal of the nut to deform into the metal of the grade 8 bolt. That's a pretty good connection. So I'm a big fan of these. They're also, they're not cheap, but uh, actually let's take a look. So here they are. The master calls them distorted thread hex lock nuts, also known as all metal or Stover lock nuts. And you can see the description reads, these one piece nuts feature distorted threads that create a vibration resistant friction, so they stay in place. They're not reusable. Not only are the nuts not reusable, but usually they make the bolt not reusable. Um, there's three different types that depending on where you want the lock part to be. The one I just showed you was called, a, I think, a top lock. It had it at the top. And the one that you're looking at was $13 for a hundred of them. So, you know, 13 uh, cents a piece, not too bad.